الرحمن الرحيم أهلا ومرحبا بكم في الجلسة الثالثة من جلسات هذه الندوة وهي بعنوان أسس وتطبيقات السلامة الكهربائية في محطات وخطوط نقل الطاقة الكهربائية يرأس هذه الجلسة مشكورا المهندس وليد السعدي نائب الرئيس للخدمات الفنية بالشركة الوطنية لنقل الكهرباء فليتفضل هو المتحدثين مشكورين شكرا جزيلا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين حقيقة نعيد الترحيب بكم للمرة الثالثة هذا اليوم في ثالث جلسات اليوم الأول العنوان الرئيسي لجلسة اليوم سيكون خاص بشبكات النقل يتعلق بأسس وتطبيقات السلامة الكهربائية في محطات وخطوط نقل الطاقة الكهربائية الحقيقة لما نتكلم عن شبكات النقل فالحديث حول العمل والتعامل مع الجهود العالية أو الفائقة أو ما يسمى بالهاي فولتج أو الإكسترا هاي فولتج عندها تصبح قضية السلامة أو تطبيق إجراءات السلامة والتحقق منها أمر في غاية الأهمية تحقيقا لسلامة الأفراد أولا والممتلكات ثانيا خلال الجلسة إن شاء الله سيكون لدينا ثلاث أوراق عمل لكل ورقة إن شاء الله نذكر المتحدثين الوقت المتاح 20 دقيقة إن شاء الله بالنسبة للحضور الكريم سيتم فتح المجال في نهاية الجلسة للنقاش وطرح الأسئلة اختصارا للوقت نبدأ بالورقة الأولى بعنوان وثائق سلامة نقل الكهرباء في الشركة الوطنية لنقل الكهرباء يقدمها المهندس وليد الزامل المهندس وليد طبعا من موظفي الشركة الوطنية لنقل الكهرباء ويقوم حاليا أو يشغل حاليا منصب مدير إدارة صيانة الأصول بحائل والشمال الشرقي المهندس وليد حاصل على بكالوريوس الهندسة الكهربائية من جامعة الملك فهد للبترول والمعادن بالإضافة إلى درجة الماجستير التنفيذي في إدارة الأعمال مع مرتبة الشرف من جامعة الملك عبد العزيز ولدي خبرة تقارب ال17 سنة في مجال نقل الكهرباء رحبوا معي بالمهندس وليد والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله من بيهاف وماي كوليك محمد الزاكي أنت متي السهاجي I'm going to, inshallah, present the Unified Safety Package that applied in National Grid, Saudi Arabia, which is owned by the holding company, Saudi Electricity Company. And the contents will go with the objectives, and we do have uh, one policy and uh, seven procedures. And these procedures are the general transmission safety requirement, uh, transmission safety documents, which is the backbone of this package, and also we have authorization of staff and the switching program procedure. Also, we have created a new procedure, which is the transmission substation entry and site follow-up and auditing, and finally, the training procedure. Uh, the objective of this package is to find all safety critical terms to standardize terminologies and prevent confusion across the national grid staff. Also, we want to collect all safety issues in one package for strict application and to unify the methodology of safety application across the national grid. And we have the detail all requests for the field staff to adhere to safety and supreme supervision of region control center. First procedure, we have the general transmission safety requirement, which is the safety rule level of for major precautionary steps to protect and prevent field personnel from expected danger. And also, we want to protect and prevent company employees and equipment. We do have uh, 21 important requirements in this package and this procedure, which experted from action experience at site <clears throat> and relate to many incidents occurred in the field. These gathered from the well-experienced people, and this is operational mistakes that happened before, and we have wrote it down from unsafe condition, unsafe act, to be well-trained for the whole employees. And uh, we do have a transmission safety document. As I, as I said, it is the backbone of the whole package. This document has merged all safety documents which were used before in central and eastern and southern and western area. 
and the transmission safety document secure and all safety requirement under the full authority of regional control centers at the areas. And it's supported by a switching program and a local computer program to keep and organize all issued safety documents. The implementation of these documents is dependent on the three elements, <coughs> which is the control center engineer who is applying the switching program and isolating the equipment and issuing the number of the safety document. And the network operator who is the field guy is physically isolated the equipment and make the boundaries and the limit and make the tag out, lock out, and danger notice, caution notice. Then he hand over to the document receiver who is mostly for maintenance. We do have six unified documents satisfying all working condition in the national grid network. These documents has a specific, a specific form and uh, it has filled, it has to be filled and mutually signed by the network operator and the maintenance guy. First document, which is the STW, sanction to work, is used once we have a work that needs complete isolation and grounding for the circuit. SFT, which is sanction for test, which is issued for work that required testing of any parts at high voltage electrical system. IER, isolation and earthing request, which is issued for the work that need isolation and grounding request for equipment sharing an interface point between two control centers. This is mostly used in the control center once we have uh, an interface between, let's say, transmission and distribution. A limitation of access is issued for work in the vicinity of the live high voltage apparatus. And the halt line work, which is issued for the work that on live overhead line, the live line work. And finally, the BEA, portable earth application, which used once we have uh, to apply a portable earth, once we don't have a CME, which is circuit main earth, is available. And this is mostly used with the outdoor equipment or old outdoor equipment. <clears throat> and the document is supported by effective tag out, lock out. Uh, we do have a caution notice and danger notice, which is the uh, plastic material and where the instruction engraved in one side and magnetic in the other side. We do have the safety lock and operation lock with red and yellow color and where the keys for the safety lock kept with the network operator and the operation lock were kept with the maintenance people. We do have a tag, tag out card where uh, <coughs> one side written the purpose for utilizing this card and the date and finally the warning tape which isolated the zone or the limits. Authorization of a staff. In order to have a safe work environment, we have to authorize the people. In this procedure, we set out the requirement to authorize the operational staff and the required qualification needs. Uh, they have to interview, we have a test format, and we are forming a committee of four Share uh, the uh, led by a chairman from senior engineer from working with the network operation, and three members one from protection and the other from five star transmission safety engineer and senior engineer from maintenance. And we do have authorization level, and we do have two types competent person and authorized person. Uh, level one for the competent, the C1. He's, al he's allowed to receive all safety documents. And C2 is allowed to receive only the limitation of access. And C3 is just allowed to enter the substation uh, for uh, certain purpose, like uh, uh, taking reading, cleaning, and etc. The other authorization level, which is the authorized, authorized person, which we do have four level. A3, it is uh, his allowed to issue a, uh, a limitation of access only. 
A2 and A1, it's allowed to issue and carry out all the operation for certain voltage. The difference is just only for the voltage. A2, it is for 33 and 38. And A1, it is for 132 and below. And finally, we do have the SA, which is the senior authorized person, which is allowed to carry out and issue all safety document 380 and below. And these authorized agent cards are provided in color codes. The pink one is for the senior authorized, the yellow one with the authorized, A1 or A2 or A3, and the competent, which is the receiver, it's in the white one. Authorization can be drawn for one of the following reasons. Moving from operational, from operational to non-operational position, leaving the national grid is a company unsatisfactory operational practices, finally following a switching disastrous error. And uh, switching program procedure, it is the, uh, it is introduced in the package uh, to support the safety document and also it is the clear guide for implementation the safety rules. It is a set of sequential written instruction dictated by uh, remote, uh, region control centers to an authorized person. It has a unique serial number which ties all other activities in the switching program. And we do have three types of switching program, planned switching program, unplanned switching program, this is during outage or emergencies, and commissioning switching program. Planned and commissioning switching program are performed by the network operation division while and plan switching program, it's performed through the uh, dispatcher engineer. Each, num uh, each number of switching program consists of 11 alphanumeric characters. Uh, the first two, two digits, it's the year. So the second two digits, it's uh, showing the area, operating area like seal central, eastern, southern, and etc. And the other four digits, the switching program itself. And last three digits, which is the sub area, uh, let's say GED for Jeddah and, and RYD for Riyadh. All information for switching program, name, badge number, issue or receiver, shall be recorded in a computer database program which is installed at the uh, control centers. An automatic number will be generated showing the safety document to be issued for the receiver and which is handed over by the telephone from the dispatcher to the network operators. The status of the safety document can be retrieved at any time with one of the following, uh, following entries. It can be through safety document number, it can be that uh, date of issue of the safety document, identification of number of the ID of the issuer. And uh, once we have closing or canceling the whole documents, uh, the, it can uh, give the alert to the dispatcher itself once we do have an open document. And this is avoid uh, or prevent uh, unsafe energization or wrong operation. We do have also a transmission substation entry. This procedure is set for national grid employee, distribution, and contractor one, whenever they enter or leave a transmission substation. Before entering the transmission substation, everybody has to do certain steps. Before opening the main gate, visitor can confer the substation number and uh, location. <coughs> Before opening the main door of the building, he should select firefighting in the manual mode. After going inside the substation, he should notify the respective region control center. He should write his name, reason for entry, time, date, and sign in the substation logbook. He should make complete visual inspection for all equipment and report for any abnormalities to the respective RCCs. And before leaving the substation, he should reconfirm the status with the respective RCC Sign again for leave, stating the date and time. Close the substation main door. He should have to return back the firefighting mode to O2 and close the substation main gate. 
any violation of these steps, it might uh, go with the withdrawal of the authorization. We do have also a slight follow-up and updating procedure. This procedure is set to discipline work at the transmission site. In that we have to confirm correct application of safety rules at site, prevent violation of safety rules in real time. We are proposing in this document to have two permanent teams, one main group concept network operator chairman and one from five star and a backup group from also from a network operator and five star. We want the follow-up and auditing, it has to be continuous and we want to discover the violation and deviation once and before it happens. We are proposing a three, five, three site visits shall be conducted or three kinds of site visits shall be conducted individually by the permanent team before start of equipment isolation and before restoration of the isolated equipment and a striking physicist any time at the work site. We do have in the procedure itself, we do have a, a checklist, what things has to be checked and, uh, and also uh, uh, what, what comments and deviation they have to report it on. The team shall note down all observation during the site visit. The team shall give advice at site for working group to correct the observed deviation and a comprehensive report shall be issued by the permanent team and submitted submit to the network operator division manager who is responsible for follow up with these reports. He should coordinate with the proper authority. He should apply the recommendation and make sure it's distributed for all. And so it comes to you. This is last. Uh, finally, we do have a training procedure. Uh, this is a quick reference for the six procedure. Uh, we want to be alert for about initial grade safety practices, satisfy the requirement for authorization, location of safety document in the field perfectly, perform switching program and adopt correct procedure to execute them in close coordination with RCC, adhere to required step to be followed to enter a transmission substation and discipline field work by regular site visit. Uh, inshallah, eventually, uh, after tedious, continuous work, the application of the safety document finally applied all over the kingdom, and inshallah, end of December, the rest of the package will be applied. Thank you.